Well, hello everyone, Cynthia Tomain with Interactive Brokers, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar on trading using R at Interactive Brokers. Now, I'm very pleased to have Quant Insky delivering today's presentation, but before we do get into that, I'd also like to put this over um, on my colleague's slides. On Kit Shaw has, um, is my colleague out of Mumbai, India, and we'll give a brief introduction about trading with Interactive Brokers. Um, thanks, Ankit. Um, thanks for joining us, and I'm going to go ahead and pass you the ball so that we can get started. Uh, take it away, Ankit. Thanks, Cynthia. So, hello, everyone. My name is Ankit Shah, and I'm from Interactive Brokers, working out of the Mumbai office. I would like to thank Quant Insti for hosting this webinar with us. Let me start by giving you a, a quick introduction to Interactive Brokers, and then to our presenter for today from Quant Insti, Mr. Anil Yadav. Um, Interactive Brokers is an online broker-dealer that provides electronic trading access to over 100 market centers across 24 countries to trade on stocks, options, futures, forex, bonds, ETFs, and CFDs from a single account. We have a strong balance sheet. We're listed on NASDAQ and are rated triple B plus by S&P. In addition to our TWS, we also offer the IBAPI, wherein you can build your own trading application that can connect to our advanced order routing and trading system using the API. This can also be achieved using R as a programming language. So I would like to now introduce Mr. Anil Yadav from Quant Insti, who will be speaking on using R as a programming language to trade with interactive brokers. A small introduction to Anil. He's managed a portfolio of equity futures using R and interactive brokers. He is an algo trade strategy advisor at iRage Capital a leading HFT firm in India. Prior to iRage, Anil has worked as an independent commodities trader, managing a portfolio of metals and energy products. He has also worked as a senior analyst at the Chatterjee Group's TCG Private Equity Fund and as convertible analyst at Lehman Brothers. Anil was trained as a mechanical engineer from Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, and completed his post-graduation in business administration from the Indian Institute of management from Lucknow. So Anil, over to you. Thanks a lot, Ankit. Thanks a lot for the kind introduction. So, all right, yes. So I presume that the screen now has moved to the presentation that I'm going to be uh, delivering today. Uh, in case my voice is not clear, please let me know. Uh, also, I've already been warned to talk slowly, which I'll try to do during the session. Uh, but just in case I am running fast, uh, I uh, request the participants to just send out a chat message reminding me the same. Uh, there's a question saying, will the slides and the code be available after the session? The slides are already uploaded at the Interactive Brokers website, I believe. Uh, the uh, code, I will have to check how exactly can we pass on the code to the participants. Uh, uh, regarding other questions during the sessions, uh, session, I would uh, suggest the participant to write down the questions uh, in case I can uh, address them during the presentation itself, I will. Otherwise, we'll keep the questions for the end of the session, and that's where uh, we'll go through them one by one. Uh, so given that now that I'll be starting with the Uh, yes, the video will be available for uh, the entire session, and uh, right. And uh, I think that uh, at least the PDF is already uploaded. And as soon as the session ends, there'll be an email from Interactive Brokers uh, with the link to the video as well. Right. So let's just get on with the agenda for the session. Uh, Okay, uh, so in terms of uh, questions of R and Python, I'll probably get back to these questions at the end of the session. So I'll just get on with uh, the webinar for now, and uh, you can keep dropping your questions, and I'll just have a look in case I can just answer them right away. Otherwise, I'll just continue. So the session outline is what we have in front of us. What we'll be doing is we will be using the TWS from Interactive Brokers and R Studio to try and send out orders uh, to the exchange. Uh, we'll be using a demo ID of Interactive Brokers and uh, the process flow that we will have uh, is 
first we'll just look at what are the kind of things that we need to do for the installation of the IDE, uh, which is our studio that you're going to use. Then a brief introduction of the iBrokers package, which is a package uh, written by Jeff Ryan for uh, R. Then we will look at the various functions that the package exposes, uh, followed by a small example. Uh, right. So the session would be almost an hour, uh, right? Uh, is my voice any clear now? Right. And then we will try and send out uh, orders followed by a toy strategy that will just be a moving average crossover. At the end of once we have done with these uh, steps, we will look at what are the steps that we need to take to ensure that the strategy that we have implemented. Hello. Uh, is the voice quality better? Okay, great. So. Right, uh, so Cynthia, I'm not on uh, speaker anymore, so that shouldn't be an issue. Right, so towards the end of the session, we'll look at uh, the robustness of the strategy and how we can enhance this uh, entire process flow to ensure that our strategy is robust enough for outliers. Right, so a brief introduction to R. R is a single threaded uh, application, so what you cannot achieve using R is any kind of a multi-threaded uh, multi implementation that you might be looking at, which you might have seen in C++ or Java. Uh, in case uh, you want to look at the source code for almost everything that is available in R as a package, uh, you sh will be able to do that because it's an open source, uh, open source language. Uh, a lot of backend coding for R can also be done in C++ with the help of a package which is RCPP. Uh, so you can almost definitely make your code very fast as well. Of course, not as fast as writing the entire thing in native C++, but uh, quite decently fast. What R helps us in general do is it exposes to us a wide variety of statistical functions that we can use for backtesting uh, that uh, we can use for backtesting. Uh, once we have established that the backtested strategy looks like uh, statistically significant, Hi, Anil. Suddenly we're not able to hear you speaking. Um, <clears throat> would you check your phone? Hi, Anil. Cynthia here. I'm not able to pick up your audio. Um, would you double check um, the <clears throat> your audio connection? Make sure you are not muted. Okay. Um, Anil, uh, perhaps you might be able to hang up and dial back in. If you would, uh, <clears throat> okay, looks like that's going to happen. Well, actually, now, while we are waiting for Anil to come back in, I have a quick um, poll that I'd like to run. Um, so I would appreciate your feedback. Notice I'm going to open that poll up on your screen, and it's only going to be open um, for a sh few short moments here, uh, well, for about a minute. So if I do ask that you would simply make your selections, notice that those, uh, <clears throat> 
uh, questions are actually multiple choice. So if you would go ahead and make your uh, selections there, and then make sure you click the submit button down at the very bottom of the screen, we'll be able to compile those results in just a few moments. Make sure once you have completed the poll that you do click submit. Thanks, everyone. Um, okay, while we're getting that feedback, um, hopefully we're uh, also going to get uh, Neil back into today's session. So uh, thanks everyone for participating in the poll. I'm going to leave it open for a few more seconds here. Um, so I do want you to uh, go ahead and finish that up. Ah, and it looks like a nil may be back. So what I am going to do is close that polling panel down. Thanks, everyone. Um, thanks for that feedback. Um, I'll actually be running it later on as well if you didn't get a chance to complete that. But it looks like a nil may be back with us uh, here, this, um, here today. So let me see if I can get back uh, to a nil. It will take me just another moment to get back to him, and we'll make sure that he's in and available. Anil, can you give us a hello? Hi, Cynthia. Ah, much better. Okay. Good to have you back. Thanks, and thanks, everyone, for your patience. Let's keep moving on. Um, Anil, I'm going to ask if uh, maybe you could take this back to your agenda, and we'll start right from there, um, because I'm not sure exactly where we ended up losing that audio. Uh, so if you would, go ahead and take it away. Oh my goodness, Anil, I'm not able to hear you once again. Um, can you give it another try? Thanks everyone for your patience, appreciate it. Well, you stand much better. Thanks for rejoining. If you would, take us back to the agenda and we'll get started directly from there. So we'll start from the beginning and you can work through. Thank you. Right. So uh, I'll restart. Uh, I'm sorry for, for the uh, inconvenience, but uh, we'll restart from the agenda again. So what we are going to do today during the session is we'll first look at an overview of R and TWS, uh, followed by an implementation of a toy strategy using R Studio. Uh, the steps involved would be first installing the ID, followed by a couple of commands to just run through all kinds of functionality that the iBroker package exposes to the user, uh, followed by a brief overview on what are the kind of steps that we need to ensure that the strategy that we have implemented is robust enough for live trading environment. Right? So why we are going to use R? Uh, but before that, what exactly is R? R is a single-threaded platform for uh, statistical testing of uh, statistical uh, functions, and it's a, basically a statistical programming language. It exposes to us a lot of functionality, which is open source, so that you can even look at the source code and try and change any kind of implementation details that you want, uh, followed by once you are, so I will just talk about in terms of what is it in terms of the workflow from a trader's perspective that needs to be uh, useful. Right, sorry. So uh, for uh, just from the perspective of a trader, so in that case, what you need to be sure of is your backtested strategy looks all right. Once the backtested strategy looks to be statistically significant, what you want to do is to quickly prototype and check if the strategy in real life behaves as it behaves in the backtest. Uh, there are a lot of issues that you might face with backtesting versus live implementation, most of it has to do with the BIDA spread, but you have modeled that correctly, more or less the other important thing that you need to care about is how does the order flow respond to your 
trades that you are implementing. So from that perspective, having your back testing as well as your trading in the same platform makes your life far more easier because you do not have to go and recode the entire set of functions that you have used for backtesting. It may not be the most optimal solution in terms of speed, but in terms of efficiency and in terms of life to market steps that you need to take, it's a very efficient process. So when I, so in general for my personal strategy that I run uh, at Irish Capital and uh, elsewhere as well, the entire idea of having the backtesting as well as the live implementation in the same platform helps me at the end of the day compare the two outputs and see where exactly is any kind of discrepancy occurring between the strategy and what the backtesting results show. Uh, there's a bunch of questions on what exactly is single-threaded. So in general, uh, a single-threaded versus a multi-threaded thing is that uh, in one case, let's say you are trying to run three different commands looking at uh, which can independently be processed. So let's say there are three instruments and you want to send out orders in each three of them. Each of them might just be updating its own price and based on the price action you want to send out an order. Ideally you will be, you should be able to do, in case it's a multi-threaded application you can send out order to all three of them separately, whereas in case it's a single-threaded application you will do it sequentially. So you'll send out orders to the first one, get done with your processing, then send out orders to the second one, and in that case, you'll be able to do that for the third one. In general, if you look at a lot of commercial products that you'll see in terms of sending out uh, orders, quite a few of them will give you an option of running the data as a separate thread versus the order routing. And in that case, it will just help you figure out, okay, even in case, the your order engine is trying to send out an order, your data is still getting processed, right? So I just get on with uh, RStudio and TWS now. Okay, so uh, the first, couple of slides just talk about how to install R and RStudio. First you need to install R from the CRAN website, then RStudio from the RStudio website. And uh, followed by that, uh, in terms of trying to see uh, that your RStudio is able to talk to uh, TWS, what you need to do is to go to the global configuration page uh, so there are a couple of questions that are there about R studio uh, I will just come to them in a bit when I'm show, walking you through the code the purpose right now of the slides is to just make you familiar with the kind of things that you'll be seeing later during the presentation. So for uh, a couple of parts, I wouldn't be taking the question right now. So just bear with me for uh, like five more minutes when we move to our studio and probably you'll be able to follow far easier. Right. So uh, this is the global configuration page for uh, TWS. Uh, all users of TWS will be very familiar with it. In case, uh, in case that is not uh, the case, uh, I'll just uh, show you where it exactly you can find it. Now, so what I'll do is I'll just move to R Studio. I'll just do a screen share, and I'll walk you through the code that is follows on the slides uh, with the R Studio so that you can see what's happening. And then we will right. 
So this is what R Studio looks like, and uh, this is what TWS looks like. So the thing that you need to do is to first get the iBrokers package. So I'll just uh, get the questions on other right, right here. Page. So what we have is first for anything to work in R, what you need to do is get the package loaded up. The package that we are going to deal with today is going to be the iBroker package. That package has been written by Jeff Ryan. Uh, he actively maintains the package as well. Uh, In general, you will see a lot of questions about the package and are in general answered by him on Stack Exchange as well. So uh, there's a question about how to download the code. Uh, I said in the beginning of the session that uh, we'll try and figure out how to send it across at the end of the session, right? So now just uh, what we'll do is first look at, okay, what we need to do is to load the package, which is uh, library iBrokers. Then there is a command to see the bunch of statements that you can follow by using just the IB or iBrokers ref command, it will give you a PDF which neatly shows up all the kind of data, uh, all the kind of functions that you can use. Uh, it's a very nifty cheat sheet that you have uh, and you can always just refer to it in case you have any questions about it. Uh, right, now let's just talk about trying to get to connect to TWS. So I'll just show you what a TWS looks like. So this is, I have a TWS in front of me. And in case uh, uh, the global configuration page is here, what I've done is I've enabled the socket client. Uh, I have a socket port 7. 497 set for us so that R can talk to uh, interactive brokers. So this R implementation that we have is essentially a implementation that has been, that was initially done in native R. So in that case, uh, what you have is all the TWS API commands have been essentially rewritten in R so that you can come, you can use all of them, right? So what we'll do is now we'll just try and connect to the TWS. So this is the command that we use, TWS command, uh, and we can quickly check that we are connected to it. So we just type in the TWS command. It shows me that the connection is done and what was the date on which it was done, what's the time at which it was done. Uh, we can have more than one session at the same time, so now I have a second connection. So what I need to specify for this is a client ID so that each session can, each connection that I've maintained from R uh, can specify its own set of instructions for uh, TWS. What you can also do is you can launch more than one instances of R Studio. So in that case, you can use the functionality that uh, a multi-threaded application would have given you. So you could have five instruments running on one instance of R and one instance of R Studio and five instances running on the second instance. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just disconnect the second one. And now we'll quickly look at, okay, how to look at the account details of the ID that we have. So now I just placed all the data from this function request account updates into a variable which is AC. Now if I just want to look at what AC has, is it has a, the set of information for the account which has what's the maintenance margin, what's the position that it has, what is the funding amount of money that it has. So, uh, there are, uh, so that is what we have here. So there are two variables that you can, uh, two uh, things that you can access. One is the account one, the second one is a list of all these uh, positions, etc. I would have. Uh, what you can do is what you can, if you just want to look at the positions that you want, uh, you can just look at 
you can just get the portfolio value and if you just look at positions now, uh, it shows you, okay, it has APL position with a market value of this, uh, the position is 100 and what the realized or the unrealized position is. Uh, there's a question on how many maximum parallel connections. Uh, I'm not sure, I, I'll have to exactly check, uh, but uh, if, uh, uh, I don't think that you should actually maintain 16 of them, but uh, that is, uh, uh, so is the RIB uh, API official? Uh, so IB does not uh, give you an R API as such, but Interactive Brokers is uh, implementation of the, the IB API that is exposed for all other languages. So it's the same one that uh, you have. So, uh, so if you just look at the portfolio value, instead of assigning it to a variable, you can directly get that. So, right. So now if you want to, let's say, send out an order, or if you want to look at the data for any given instrument, uh, so in general, no, you do not need any, so there's a question about are there any prereqs for this? Uh, in general, no, you can probably install RStudio at, on your uh, home PC as well. Any system that supports GWS will mostly be good with RStudio, so you shouldn't be, uh, uh, then there's a question on uh, can R be connected to a paper trading account? Right now, the uh, the R session that I have is connected to a demo account, so I believe uh, it should be uh, possible to connect. Uh, the code, again, uh, share, I'll get back to you at the end of the session. Uh, I still haven't shared it, so I don't think that it's available to the participants right now. Right? So to now look at, so now we'll just go ahead and uh, try and see, okay, what can we, kind of things that we can do with the API. So what we can do is, uh, first, you, if you want to get data or you want to send out orders, what you need to do is, you need to first define the instrument. So this is how we do that. Uh, so if it is a stock, we do that using TWS stock, TWS SDK. In case, so there are different functions for everything. You can do a TWS currency or a TWS future. There is a completely separate package called TWS uh, instrument, which exposes a lot of functionality as well. But to for the session, what we will do is uh, we'll just uh, look at the stock. Uh, Apple. So what we have done is we have defined a stock, uh, which is by calling the function TWS stock, and then we ha now have this thing in uh, in our memory, which is a variable uh, security. Uh, what we can do now is we can check if the security is valid or not. So we'll just check if it is a TWS contract. In general, even if you had probably put in any kind of uh, non-valid value as well, it might have worked. Uh, but uh, in general, in case you are defining expiry dates, etc., with TWS feud, in that case it tells you that if your expiry date is valid or not. Right. So what I can also do is I can also tell, okay, which exchange I wanted to. So if you just look at TWS uh, functions, what you have is TWS equity, which takes the symbol, it takes the exchange, then it takes which primary exchange it takes, which is the currency. So you can put in all these values inside and you will you'll be able to define the instrument that you are looking to trade. Now, let's say if you just want to see, okay, what's the market data for this security? So the function for that is request market data. What we will see is the raw data that's coming in, uh, what, how to, 
make this data useful for our trading is something that we'll just look after this. So what I'll do is I'll just run this function and it will display, if you just look at the lower bit of the screen, you will see, okay, uh, there's a lot of data that's coming in. So you'll see uh, it has variables like bid size, ask size, bid price, uh, bid price and bid size both in the same one. Uh, it has volume, so it has all the market data that flowing uh, through here. And what we need to do is we need to, for our users, uh, use of during the strategy, try and see how to combine this data into some more meaningful format. Uh, so what we will do now is we will try and see, okay, uh, first of all what we will try to do is we will try to send out an order. Uh, after that, what we will do is we will try and see, okay, how can we uh, essentially now transform this data to something which is far more feasible. So the function for sending out order is place order. The format for the function is you need to specify which connection you are on. Uh, you also need to specify which is the instrument at which you are sending out the order. And then you have to send it, okay, what's the kind of order that you are trying to send out? And what's the size? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send out an order of size 10, uh, which is going to be a market order. So I'll just keep this open here so that you can see when the order goes out. And what it says is, now you'll see, okay, uh, TWS has given me a warning saying that uh, I have to check all these limits are enable, enabled or not. Uh, you can actually bypass them during global sessions as well. What I've done is, so that it throws up the error, I've left it as is. So if I just do that, now you see that there was an order for size 10 that was sent out since it was a market order, it immediately got executed, right? So now I have a position of size 10 that is there. So since I already sent out an order of size 100, which I have shown you. So now if I just go and rerun my command saying, okay, what's the position looking like? So if I now look at it, the position is still, okay, so, okay. So why am I not getting, so okay, because I have, uh, not updated the account. So once I update the account once more, and now once I look at what my position is, you'll see that the position is now turned to 110. So every time you want an update, first of all, you have to either ask R to go and fetch an update for the account or the market data before it will do anything for you. Right? So now we know how to send out an order. We also know how to look at the flowing data, right? So that is the basic of iBrokers, uh, sending out order and looking at data. Now we will look at a slight amount of So, okay, so there's a question about why. So the price that I'm seeing it as is 137 because the dem demo account, so yes, we'll get a delay. So there was a question on why the price in the uh, demo is different from the price uh, on the uh, real life as of now. So, right. So now what we'll do is we'll slightly get into the technical detail on how to essentially fetch everything uh, from the session. So what I'll do is I'll just show you what the uh, architecture of uh, the iBrokers is. So I'll just get to that slide and show you, okay, what the architecture looks like. So the three things that uh, uh, are important for you to understand that or that it has a callback function, an e-wrapper function, and a process message, message function, okay? So the callback function is 
essentially a function that ensures that you are always connected uh, to the TWS session and updating the data. The eWrapper function has the data inside it and the process message essentially is where we make this binary data that is flowing from TWS to, uh, to the iBroker package into something that is meaningful as well. Right. So what we will now see is what a TWS callback looks like, which is TWS callback is an implemented function whenever you need to change anything. What you need to do is to make a change to this function. So what we will see is now if I just type the TWS callback function, it shows me what the present implementation of the TWS function, uh, TWS callback is, it takes a bunch of variables. What you need to understand is the details of this function in case you want to work, right? So the next example that I have is a change of this, which again is an example that uh, Jeff Ryan had sent out. Uh, so on one of the uh, news group that exists online. So I just taken the same example and call it a snapshot function. What it does is that it gives me a snapshot. I'll show what the snapshot eventually looks like, but uh, the snapshot of the data that is there at the market at that, that given point of time, uh, the difference between the function that I have written uh, versus the function that is that I just shown you, which is a TWS callback is just these two lines. So if you just look at uh, a line that I've added is uh, the e wrapper symbols line. So what is the data inside the e wrapper that I'm putting is the symbols for which I'm going to call. And the second thing that I'm going to do is instead of uh, if any of the data frame turns out to be a NA, uh, NA which in uh, R is basically a way of saying is the data does not exist. It essentially R points the data to uh, and returns to me a data frame that works, right? So now I'll show you what this does. So now earlier, if you look at it, our request function that we had done was request market data with a TWS and the security, which essentially made the data flow on the screen. The next function that we are going to call is request market data, where we are specifying, okay, this is the event wrapper that we are going to use and the callback for this security, which is APL. Now let's just look what the output we get this time. So this time, if you look at it, the data that comes out is far more human readable. What you have is now the data arranged in bit, bit size, ask, ask size, last volume, and whatever has, is the current thing. So now that you have data in this format, what you can do from here onwards is use this data in your strategy, right? So now what we do is we will just uh, disconnect TWS for once and we'll just connect back again in a bit. And then we will just try and now send out an order again. This time the order would be a limit order. And this time instead of specifying the order ID, what we will do is we will try and see, okay, how to just send out the order ID by using a function which is get request IDs, right? So the, okay, so there are a bunch of questions on how to make the data, et cetera, flow. I just have a look at them at the end of the session. I just uh, run through to the place where uh, the strategy will start running and then we will uh, probably just uh, to have a look at the questions, right? So now we will just see, okay, how to place an order. So what we'll do is we'll just connect it back to it. Then I just got an order ID. So I can just look at, okay, what the order ID looks like that we have. So the order ID is 1054. So the last order ID that I had specified was 1053, right? So now what we have is, uh, so I just specified uh, another 
variable, which is my order, uh, which specifies the bunch of uh, instrument, a uh, bunch of details about it. So what's the limit price that I'm going to send out? Uh, you'll see that there is a variable which says transmit equal to false. I just show you what the variable does. So now let's just look at this. So here, if you see that the order has come here, the limit price is uh, what the limit price that I had specified at 108.10. And what we have is a button which says that you should now, you can now transmit the order. What has happened is, what has happened is that the order has reached interactive brokers, but interactive brokers has still not sent out the order to the exchange. Why this is the case is, let's say in the beginning, you do not want to send out orders to the exchange the couple of first few times because you aren't sure. And what you want to do is to have a manual review on it. So for that, this feature helps a lot. So what you do is now you transmit, and now this order has reached the exchange. So you'll see that a buy price at 108.10 does not make a lot of sense because the price now is 137. So what I can do now is I'll just cancel the order, but uh, that's what I've done. So I'll just uh, dismiss this, and uh, so the order is now cancelled. So this is what a buy order is. Similarly, if you want to send out a stop limit order with your own price, uh, what you can do is you can send out an order of the type stop limit. A stop limit order, what it has is that it has a limit price as well as what it has is an auxiliary price. So once the order breaches a certain limit, it will send out an order. So what it has is that if I just uh, do this, what it will do is it will, um, uh, so it did not send out an order, so, but uh, basically it was, uh, the connection is already dropped. So what I'll do is I'll just reconnect and uh, I'll just have another. So you see that there is an order again. Uh, which is now if you look at it, it has the fields that you are looking at if the price is, so if you just look at it, it's the limit price at which the order will go, which is 108.10. In case the stop price that the order has specified which is 108.10 has been breached. So in case, let's say I just transmit this order, so this order will go out. So there's a question, is there a platform like this for NSCBSE? Uh, so Ankit can clarify, but Interactive Broker definitely works for NSC. So that is what the thing is. And so this is what we have. So we have, a, we have managed to send out a limit order. Uh, what we have also managed to do is what uh, we have sent out a, a, a stop limit order uh, with uh, different parameters. Now what we will see is I'll run a very small moving average crossover strategy so that uh, you can see how exactly with a strategy uh, send out orders, but uh, uh, so the, to just make sure that the strategy essentially runs in front of your eyes if uh, the, the strategy runs in front of your eyes, I just tweak the parameters so that it immediately sends out the order. Uh, but uh, of course, and the other thing is that the toy strategy is definitely not supposed to be implemented for uh, the session, uh, so for live trading. So what we have is now what we are going to do is uh, run the uh, toy strategy. Okay, so okay, so I was just reminded that I just did not do the re request historical data. So I just uh, show how to get the request uh, to get the historical data. Sorry, I just uh, missed that line. It seems so. Uh, to get the historical data, the function in uh, uh, Interactive Brokers is uh, request historical data. So I just uh, uh, reconnect to TWS, which is uh, TWS Connect, and I'll just uh, show you what the historical data looks like. So I just uh, 
uh, asked for historical data on this connection for the security. And uh, what we now look at is this variable, which is data underscore APL. If you look at it, it has the last five days of data. Uh, sorry, it, uh, so just because. So, to by default, you got the five days of data. Uh, you can just go and ask for more data by just specifying what uh, the values that request historical data has. It uh, gives, gets you a lot of options in terms of how many days, uh, what's the bar size, but you should be aware that it also follows all the uh, restrictions that TWS has on, uh, Interactive Brokers has on data retrieval rates, and not all bar sizes will be applicable for some instruments, some bar sizes will work. So you will probably need to uh, interact with the Interactive Brokers to figure out, okay, what exactly is the kind of valid inputs that you might have, right? So. Uh, that is, uh, I don't believe that adjusted close is available, but uh, I'm not sure that uh, that's again something that uh, if the data is available, uh, is uh, supplied by interactive brokers, that the package will uh, get it. So uh, I'm not sure about adjusted close, sorry. So, uh, so yeah, so now what we are going to do is I'll just talk you through what the, uh, Uh, so uh, I'll just get back on uh, intraday historical data. So intraday historical data is possible. Uh, so, so there are a bunch of so there is uh, there are a bunch of uh, ways of going about it. Uh, but uh, I'll just get to it. Sure. So uh, right. So now let's just look at what the strategy does. What this strategy that I have in front of me is just a moving average crossover strategy. What it does is it runs every second and gets the data. In case the data has changed, it calculates the average, the moving average for uh, the period which is SMA underscore length one and SMA underscore length two, which is one and five respectively. So. Uh, one second and five second crossover is what it looks like. And what it does is as it sends out an order whenever on the buy side, whenever the small moving average is greater than the long moving average by a tick. Uh, otherwise, when the small moving average is lesser than the long moving average, uh, then uh, by one tick it will just send out a sell order. The quantity that it's going to send out an order for is going to be one, uh, and that's what it is going to do. So what I'll do is I'll just um, run this so that uh, we will uh, essentially just uh, start. And so, right, so this is what, right. So for the first five unique data points, it will say that there is not enough data, and then uh, it will print out what the, moving averages are, and uh, I should have TWS in front of me so that you can actually send that, when it sends out an order, you can actually just look at it. So, so the, till now there is, uh, the moving averages are same, so the order is not being sent out. So I'm just assuming that within 10 years, yeah. So it sent out an order of sell. Now the current position is minus one. Uh, if you see that the order was executed in 137.48, right? So that is what it does. And now it has sent out a buy order at 137.51. So this is what it will do. So it will just keep toggling between the two of them. So that is what uh, I have right now. So that's what I'll just do. I just stop this now. So. Uh, so if you just look at it, um, I'll just explain the code once more. So what I've done was I just run this inside a while loop which is says that true. And every time I'd get a data, I'd put go into a system sleep of one second, which is not the best implementation. 
right? So what instead, what you can do is what I'd shown you with the TWS callback function. You can modify the T TWS callback function to just do this while loop for you. In that case, you wouldn't have to write a separate loop for this. Uh, the example code for that is again available online, so I, but it was slightly complicated code to explain during the session, so I did not put that example here. And uh, so there are a lot of questions about the sample code. I will, uh, we will get back about the sample code at, uh, at the end of the session once uh, we are sure. So I just, uh, so to stop it, I just pressed an escape, uh, uh, which is how you stop anything in the R. So R is the escape command in, uh, uh, so escape is the uh, escape command in R. So what I'll do now is I'll just go back to the slides and, uh, we will now see, okay, what are the kind of things that we can do? Uh, so, the, okay, so I'll just stop sharing my screen, and what I'll do is I will now go to uh, the, so, sorry, so I will now go to warnings and pitfalls. So, this is what uh, I will talk about for a bit. And then what we can do is that, uh, right, so what we are going to now talk about is warnings and pitfalls, and then we will talk about where exactly is the code available, et cetera, so not this code, but the rest of the code. Uh, this code we will get back to you later. Uh, uh, so from the risk management module that so one of the most important thing that you have to deal with while sending out automated orders is that your risk management module has to be really robust uh, as a high frequency trader or even as a low frequency trader what you have to be extra cautious about is to ensure that your risk management takes care of all possible errors that might happen, right? So you, the way to ensure that this happens is to write test cases that give out output that are matchable against your input every time, right? There are a lot of changes that also happen at the end from interactive brokers for their API upgrades, and you want to be sure that whatever you have done during the past API does not clash or does not get broken in case any of the API updates happen. So to ensure that this is the kind of thing that is there, you have to ensure that you have a robust back test, uh, robust testing for your code. You are, every part of your code is properly tested and you have proper unit test cases written. In terms of market risks, almost a lot of market risk conditions have already been taken care of by interactive brokers, but in case you want to add some more, you should ideally do that to ensure that uh, the strategy or anything else that you have is interacting perfectly and giving you the kind of risk level that you want, right? So now let's just go to what are the kind of things that we need to ensure that we have a robust environment for live trading. Uh, what we need to do is first of all, the most common thing that you will have is socket connection losses. Uh, you have to handle the error codes that Interactive Broker gives you uh, in case you have made some error. Uh, in case your network is not very stable, uh, what's the kind of things that you need to ensure? So 
one very robust implementation is there on the link that is there at the end that you see, uh, which is GitHub Sense 6. Uh, it's not an endorsement, but the code that is there is a two-step code, one step deals with just getting data, the second step manages the order. I would suggest that everyone should look at it. It handles almost all the kind of error cases that you might face, and it ensures that you have a robust trading platform that uh, is there. Right? It's far more complicated than the toy cases that I've handled, uh, toy case that I handled, but in terms of a live trading environment, in terms of the code that I use for my live trading, uh, it's more, it's almost completely based on the code that is hosted on the GitHub site. Right? So there are two other uh, sources. One is this uh, London Hour presentation which talks about how to change the process message and the uh, wrapper function along with the callback function so that you can do the kind of things that you want to do without writing a while loop for your own or a system that sleep so that you can just uh, do things on uh, the events that happen. It also, uh, the slide, the, so, yeah, so it's there in the PDF, so you should be able to see that. So it's the last, uh, on the 19th slide, it's the last link on 19th slide. So that's about it from now, uh, for now, from me. Uh, I suggest that everyone should uh, try to do that. Uh, and uh, this is uh, where the session ends now. We will uh, probably take uh, a bunch of questions uh, so, in terms of uh, the questions, there are a bunch of things that I did see floating through. Uh, if you ha now have questions, you can write them down, but there are a bunch of questions that are floating through mostly to, related to Python versus the R. Uh, the thing is that I am not the, the, uh, an expert in Python. I've actually not used it, so I can't comment on it. Uh, in terms of using R for trading, I think it's quite robust. Occasionally there are errors, but in terms of uh, interaction with uh, the platform, is it, uh, is it possible to do it without manual intervention? Yes, it is definitely possible to do without manual in intervention. And uh, yes, just a quick reminder to everyone, uh, Uh, that uh, we have our self-paced learning portal, which is called Quantra. Uh, we are offering for Python for trading, we are offering a, a discount. So in case you want to use, you can use the IB Webinar 15 coupon for it. And uh, yes, so the question is, uh, and you can of course get in touch with uh, the team at Quantinsty. Uh, so there are a bunch of, do, you, do I think that R is better than Python? Okay, since I only use R, of course for me R is far better than Python. Uh, there are, uh, can you download high frequency data from R, uh, IBTWS into R? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, so one of the things that uh, the, uh, code that Sensex had written that I did talk about, uh, it gives you a way of even storing the data. Uh, so so I, I cannot comment on, okay. So uh, can I subscribe to the, Ankit, can, uh, I don't know. So basically I don't know, yes, so. So the, So is there anyone on the group? So I use it, so so PDF and my code. I'll have to check with uh, about the code. That is something that, uh, the question is that uh, IB package connects to the local, local IB client or connects to the IB servers. Okay, so, uh, I, so the interactive broker package implementation that I have uh, shown you is the, 
connection is on the same local box. So it's not to the IP server, but the connection is made to the TWS client that is running on your box. Okay. So in case, uh, so the question is, yes, uh, so the, uh, Rajiv is still at Boomerang, yes, I think uh, I, I will have to check in case he's around. So, can you presentation to our email address? I think that will be done as soon as the, uh, sure, uh, the last two links, always incomplete because showing the success ratio. Oh, okay, so uh, the in general, so the, uh, uh, so all those things that you're talking about in terms of backtesting, managing it, uh, uh, that is possible to do it on R with a package which is known as Blotter. Uh, we, uh, which is essentially, uh, which is available and uh, you should be able to do that uh, as well. I mean, so uh, you can look at your success uh, rates, et cetera, using the package Blotter. Okay. Uh, so there is a question about Sensex. Am I recommending the IB broker version? Yes, that's the version that I'm recommending, yes. Uh, the back testing package, uh, the, quest, the package is Blotter, B L O T E R, right? Yes, and uh, uh, yes, uh, T W S has to be loaded up, uh, and uh, so the uh, the email to the recording will be sent uh, immediately after the session, right? And uh, uh, Anil, uh, so there is, so Manandar, uh, no, I think uh, as soon as you, uh, uh, so the, do you need to leave? Actually, no, you don't. Yes, so Cynthia has already replied to it right here. So. Okay, well, um, Cynthia back here again, and I want to thank all of you as well as Quant Insti for today's presentation. I appreciate um, Anil's perseverance, even though we did have those audio difficulties at the start of today's event. Now, I have received quite a few messages during today's session on uh, whether today's presentation um, has been recorded, and we are recording. I'll be sending you out a direct link soon after our session ends, so if you want to come back and review those concepts that Anil went through, um, please t I'll simply watch your email later on today. Also, the webinar notes are set to pop up as you do exit today's session. It will open in a separate browser window where you can bookmark and, uh, or simply print, download and print. By the way, both the recording and the webinar notes will also be posted on the Interactive Broker website. Underneath the education menu, there's a webinars link. Go to the recordings button and you'll be able to find today's session um, <clears throat> listed under the API tab. So please take a look at that, but you'll also get a direct link later on today. Um, now, a couple of other things that I did want to do, and first of all, I have another poll. Um, I would like to ask everyone uh, for a quick, let me go ahead and open up my polling panel. I do want to uh, quickly just get some feedback from you. Now notice the poll has just opened and there are three short questions there. I do ask that you make your selection and then make sure that you click the, the submit button in the lower right hand corner of your screen. That will allow me to compile those results. Your feedback is very helpful and what allows me to bring additional topics such as this um, via our webinar program. Program. Poll is going to end in about six seconds, so if everybody would finish up um, and make sure you click that submit button. So thanks, everyone. Also, um, do want to uh, run one more time. I had a request at the beginning of today's session. We did run a poll just to get some background information on um, the participants here today. So I'm going to open up a poll in just a second and we'll ask those of you who didn't participate um, if you do want, um, <clears throat> if you would, simply um, uh, notice here. Let's go ahead. We're going to 
me see if I can open that poll once again. Hold on a minute. Um, Ah, and here we go. Okay, I had the wrong one open, but now I do have that open. I do ask, and once again, these are multiple choice questions, so if you do have any um, comments here, uh, or uh, make, please make your selections and then go to that submit button. Thanks, everyone. We do appreciate the feedback. Now. Um, also, I do want to point out, and what I'm going to do while that poll is running, is actually take you back um, into our session today, uh, and let me actually go back into what I'm going to do here, is grab the ball back from Emil for just a moment, because I also did want to point out that um, What's going to be displayed is both, if you've got questions about interactive brokers, notice here we've got a page that's devoted for that, and you'll also find contact information for our Mumbai colleague, Ankit Shah. Ankit's hard work has actually brought us today's presentation. So if you do have questions about trading with interactive brokers or um, uh, account minimums, et cetera, you can always get in touch with Ankit. Now, also do want you to be aware that um, today's slides also include some additional contact information here as well on that executive program for algorithmic trading, and um, so want you to be aware of this. Now, by the way, in the PDF copy, all of these links will be available for you. So with that, it looks like we are going to end today's session. I do want, um, and by the way, let me see, I think a chat, I want to double check the chat panel before we do exit today and see if there is any um, additional questions. Well, it looks like we're seeing just thank yous here. So once again, I do want to thank Anil um, uh, for persevering through those audio difficulties early on. And, um, um, thank you so much for today's presentation. So we'll thank you, Cynthia. Thank that. you, everyone. Okay, thank you. Um, now, we are going to conclude today's event, and we have been recording. So watch your email in a few short minutes. I'm going to be sending out a direct link to today's recorded playback. Thanks, everyone, for your participation with us here today, and have a great day, all. Just be sure you trade smart. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Okay, and cut to the